Yo, what's up? It's Dio Stewart. Um, if you notice, I'm in a different uh, room today. This is my bedroom. Um, purple wall. Wife's idea. Um, but, uh, yeah. I'm in daytime. The kids are taking a nap. I didn't really want to do the video in the kitchen or dining room where I usually do. So now I am going to be in here. So, yeah. So I've commissioned a illustrator to do some character art for some of my characters. Um, he's doing eight of them, which I have a lot more than eight characters. But he did the six main uh, rulers that's involved in the war, as well as the former ruler and his wife. Um, so all those pictures are going to be right here. Um, you're not going to be able to see them all in this video. So today's video, I am going to talk about some of the characters in my story. Um, I will be doing this kind of video for the next six weeks. Um, talk about characters from a certain kingdom and maybe talking a little bit about the kingdom itself um, I don't really know it just kind of depends how I'm feeling I guess and how I want to describe the characters in a sense so today for week one of these videos I'm going to go over the characters from the kingdom of Brighthelm which is the capital of Metagor it's the center it's where the Lord actually resides in so I'm going to go over all of those characters first the first character I want to talk about is Brighton Lord Brighton is the former Lord um, over Metagor he is the Lord at the very beginning of the story he gets sick and ill and dies uh, which is what kind of sparks the whole war in a sense um, is his death he appears to be approximately about 80 years old. Um, he's an elf, so he's actually a lot older than that. He's 946 years old, um, with the average lifespan of elves being about a thousand years. Um, so he appears about 80. He's been lord over Metagor for 735 years, as well as was lord over Rigdale prior to that, which is what Brighthelm used to be, was Rigdale, and it got changed to Brighthelm once uh, Metagor became a unified uh, kingdom, um, which I ain't going to go too much into the history and backstory of that. Um, I might do a blog on my website uh, with some of the history and events like that maybe. Um, if y'all would like to know more about that, just leave me a comment down below and I'll answer those um, and maybe do a video about some of the history of the different lands as well. But while he was ruler over Metagor um, and even Rigdale before that, he sat through six different wars um, that he had sent armies into, as well as two rebellions that was raised against him. Um, and he's uh, prevailed um, for the most part. He, there was a, a couple wars, or one or I think one war, um, that he lost. Um, and again that's in the history backstory that's not really mentioned in the book at all um, it's just kind of information that I know about and that I might write spin-offs or you know prequels or something like that for them um, at one point or another I don't know but again if y'all would like to know more about that you can just comment and request me to do it and I might uh, get into it later um, as I said I'm probably going to do a blog of a lot of the history um, which would kind of briefly describe some of that stuff so if you don't follow my blog or anything uh links down below i will be posting a blog post each week to go over some of the history oh god some of the history of the different kingdoms that i'm talking about that week so this week's brighthelm so my blog will be centered around brighthelm's history um so you can go check that out. I'll try to do those on Saturdays. So back to the point of this video. Uh, Brighton, like I said, is the former Lord over Metagor. He used to travel in his young, uh, younger years as Lord and would explore the different lands of the Abyss and learn other cultures. He's very hands-on. He liked to get involved in different realms, uh, matters. Not really in a bad way, but he liked to network in a sense. He liked to grow an alliance. He liked to, you know, be in favoritism with the different lands. He learned about their history and about their warfare and their languages and 
their cultures and everything. Um, he was very intelligent. He could speak 10 different languages, which in my universe and my lands of the abyss, uh, there are 11 languages. So he knew all of them except one. Um, and the one that he didn't know was one that wasn't really relevant for him to learn, I guess. Um, again, history, let me know. I'll explain all that more. But uh, <laughs> the other person in the picture over here um, with Brighton is Kalama. Kalama is his wife. They met in a foreign land uh, named Panora. It was a very bad time for both of them. Um, it was torture in a sense but they met they fell in love and they lived happily ever after besides the six wars and two rebellions and yada 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 but you know they they've been together they, they're still madly in love with each other they had 11 children which is phenomenal if you ask me uh their 11 children um i got a list right here in front of me i'm just going to kind of read them off their names from oldest to youngest their oldest two were twins, Branton and Noel. Um, they didn't have them right after they got together. They had been together for a while, and he still kind of liked to travel and explore. And eventually, when he decided to settle down, and they decided to actually start a family, um, they had twins to start out with. That's one way to start, huh? But uh, Brandon and Noel are their oldest um, son and daughters. Um, after that, in order, it's Titus, Garnett, Keegan, Crystal, Brandy, Olwen, Fiametta, which he's called Fee for short. That was like his little nickname or whatever for her. Um, then after that, that was going to be their last children. And years passed, and then they had a whoops <laughs> moment. And uh, they had another set of twins, which is their youngest. Um, and in the story, they are described still being very young and living at home, even though he's 946, you know, appearing to be 80 years old, and they got this, you know, child. Um, and those twins is Ira and Aiden. Um, I don't think you really see Ira any in the story. Aiden is where you see her a little bit um aiden's actually seen early on um i think in chapter two not really much it's just mentioned he's there um and then later in the story all the kids are there um but they're not really a part of the story they're not really a set of the cast or anything um they're just kind of there for the funeral and such but besides uh Brighton and Kalama, the other one I had, my illustrator do is Cornelius. Um, he is the new lord after Brighton passes. He gets elected. Um, he was a former Viscount, which is how they elect their rulers. They have a set of 10 Viscounts. They elect amongst themselves to become the ruler. Um, this is if the Duchess or the Duke or whoever declines to become lord after the death of the former lord which the Duchess does. She declines it. She doesn't want it. She says she's still too young and inexperienced and doesn't want that kind of weight on her. Um, so the Viscounts elect them from themselves and Cornelius gets uh, elected. Cornelius is very young. He appears to be about 16 years old. Um, he's got the golden hair, blue eyes, you know, typical elf. Um, he's very nervous and easily overwhelmed. Um, he wasn't really expecting to be elected and some of the people of the Viscounts were kind of shocked that he did um, but he he has good intentions um, he's a good kid he wants to be Lord you know it's the dream you know in a sense and as he gets older you know he wants to be able to be Brighton basically he looked up to Brighton as this honorable man this honorable lord that everybody loved and adored he wanted to be that he thought if he could start young since Brighton had start young he could learn what Brighton learned he even borrows uh, some journals that Brighton used to keep um and reads over it and you know kind of relive in Brighton's past in a sense you know hoping that he could be like that unfortunately when he gets elected when the grand dukes find out 
they are pissed because they wasn't allowed to vote. They wasn't up for election. They couldn't even become, I gotta wait. I ain't sorry about that, my mom called. Um, let's see, where was that? Cornelius, yeah. Uh, when he gets elected, he meets with his Grand Dukes. They are pissed because of the whole election process, how they wasn't up for election, they didn't get to vote, anything like that. Um, and it started with one of them basically just saying that he was just going to leave um, the kingdom. He's going to take his land, um, his domain, his realm, and separate. And then the other Grand Dukes followed suit, except for one. And it basically sparked a rebellion, in a sense, um, and a war um, that's known as the War of the Six Kingdoms. And that's the whole thing for the book is the war um it kind of follows it from the conception to completion of that war and Cornelius, like i said he's very young he's very nervous and once the war starts he is very overwhelmed with everything i mean he just gets crowned lord i mean like, he's expecting to be peaceful and everything else he's looking forward to it and then all of a sudden his grand dukes are angered at him they start a war and just all this pressure just gets to be too much for him. He just starts kind of crumbling and his mental state starts deteriorating. And you kind of see that um, throughout the story. It's just, I guess it can be heartbreaking in a sense um, just to see this person. He's very young. He's just, you know, kind of nervous, but at the same time, kind of excited. And then it's just. He breaks down um, just underneath all the pressure. Um, besides Cornelius, um, the rest of the cast for Braham, I don't have a, a picture for. Um, the next is the Duchess, Duchess Zuri. She's very young. She appears to be about 24. Um, she's got kind of short uh, shoulder length, so I guess not really too short, uh, but brown hair. She's got green eyes, freckles. She's very proper. And she's kind of like a caregiver. She kind of looks after Cornelius a little bit. Um, not really in like a motherly way, but as an older sibling type way, I guess. Um, she's very loyal. Um, and she's, she's a sweetheart, I guess, in a sense. Um, she's just, you know. She composes herself as royalty, um, more so than Cornelius or some of the other um, rulers of the other realms. I mean, she's more, you know, proper, um, sits properly and straight, and you know, composes herself in such manner. Um, after her, you got Tylon, which is the Marquess. He is roughly 47 years old, or appears to be 47 years old. Um, he is a dark elf, so he's got red eyes. He's kind of got really short, um, almost about like mine, very shaved, probably a little bit shorter than mine. Uh, black hair with some peppered um, gray in there. Um, he is less proper he he's always kind of slouching or you know just kind of whatever just lean back in his chair you know kick back relaxed um he doesn't really seem to he doesn't have urgency to him um in a sense in the way he composes himself um he does his job he knows what's to be done he does it without being told to do it but he still kind of has that like teenage type vibe almost um, just how he acts at times and how he presents himself um, there's one part where he goes and talks to Cornelius and he just kind of kicked back you know I imagine you know maybe tossed a leg up over the arm of the chair where he's kind of you know relaxed and shit and uh, Cornelius like tells him to do something and he just kind of sits there he's like I told you to do this why are you not doing it Talon's like I've already got it covered don't worry about it so he, he does his job, and he knows what's to, supposed to be done, and he makes sure it's done. But just the way he presents himself is very kind of arrogant and childish in a way. 
after Tylon, you got some uh, Royal Guards. Um, there's only two that's really mentioned. Um, or I think there's a couple other that's named. But the only two that I had in my character sheet that, you know, could hold any kind of importance to me uh, would be Trogar and Madrox. They're both trolls. And, um, very heavily armored. Um, they're two of the guards that Cornelius has on him at all times. Um, besides them, you got uh, Deivar or Deivar. I think that's how it's actually supposed to be pronounced. I've always pronounced it Deivar. But whenever I had uh, my computer read the story back to me, it pronounced it Deivar. I don't know. But uh, I always pronounce it Deivar. He's uh, the Yeo. <clears throat> He's the Yeoman, um, which is basically a bartender um, in the butlery. Oh, well. Uh, he's basically the bartender of the castle. Um, his job is to pour drinks. Um, he is the head bartender, in a sense. Um, he manages that. He also goes to the wine cellars and, you know, pours the drinks for the Lord and his family and the Duchess and such. Um... But for the most part, he works in just the commoner bar, in a sense, um, of the castle. Um, he is accused of being the one who poisoned uh, Brighton at the beginning of the story, and he is, you know, held on trial and such. Um, don't really want to go too far into him. I have to read a story to find that out. Besides that, those characters uh, I mentioned earlier how the Viscounts elected amongst themselves to be the new lord, which was Cornelius. Um, there are always 10 Viscounts at a time. So once one gets elected, they replace them. And usually it's people of power that's already a Viscount or some other form of political power. Their family is usually the Viscounts. Or if you have enough money, you could buy your way onto the council. In a sense, so the group of Viscounts um, after Cornelius gets elected, you have Afar, which is like the head Viscount. Um, he's very old. Um, he's seven, he's roughly about seventy um, in appearance wise. Um, like I said earlier, elves live like a thousand years, so he's like probably eight nine hundred years old somewhere in there. I, can't do the math off the top of my head, but he appears about 70. Um, he's got green eyes, short, white-ish, gray uh, hair, and he wants to be in charge. His intention is to be the new lord, um, and he is one of those that is angered um, that Cornelius got elected, and he's even more angry that in the election he didn't receive any votes. Um, he sees it as since he is the oldest Viscount and like the leader of the Viscounts that he should have been in line for the crown in a sense. Um, so he's kind of very upset about that and it's kind of mentioned here and there about that. The other uh, Viscounts underneath him you have Zoe which is uh, roughly a 28 year old um, elven female. Also, every Viscount um, or any pow pos political position in Brighelm is always an elf because they see elves as being the superior being in a sense. Um, so, all these characters have been elves except Deavar, Deavar, whatever. Um, he's a Morling, and then Trollgar and Madrox, which are the royal, royal guards, they're both trolls. All these others have been elves, um, minus Kalama and their children, because they're all Illustrians. Um, but Brighton, Cornelius, Zeroe, Tylon, and then all of the Viscounts, they're all elves. I don't think I mentioned that earlier, so clearing that up. <laughs> but um, Zoe, um, like I said, roughly about 28 year old um, female elf. Um, not really that important to the story. Um, she has a twin brother named Sinson. Um, also not really relevant to the story that much. Um, you got Ramus. 
who appears to be about 47 years old. Um, he is very intelligent. He's like a scientist in a sense. Um, he studied a lot. Um, he's kind of leading the investigation on uh, Brighton's murder and who the corporate could have been. Um, you got Coy, which is the second oldest uh, Viscount. Um, she is very kind of short. Um, she kind of not as bad as Afar, but she still kind of feels entitled. She feels like she cares more for the kingdom and its well-being than any of the other Viscounts. Um, besides those, you got Parenthus, which is uh, another dark elf who he appears about 38 years old. You got Kafel, who's 33 years old. He was originally an Alberian um, warrior um, before he ever moved to Brighthelm. Um, so he's got the branding from battles on his arms and such. He's also left handed. Don't really think that plays any part into the story, but that's. A little thing that I've got down for him as a character that he is left-handed um, and that he has some like scars and stuff on his left hand and arm from being a warrior in his left hand because that had been his side that was exposed and he would have had his shield in his right hand um, you got Thoral who's roughly appears to be about 25 years old um, you got Edoran which is uh, another elderly uh, Viscount, he appears to be about 65. He's very heavy set. Um, and he is more of the religious type um, compared to some of the others. And then you got the newest Viscount, which replaced Cornelius once he took the crown, which is Mila. She's just roughly about 20 years old in appearance. She's a little heavy set. Um, and she's also a forest granddaughter. Um, so, like I said earlier, if you have a family that's part of the political scale in some place you know you can get onto the council that way um, which is how she got on it was from her grandfather being the head of the council um, also if you had any kind of money or something you could buy your way in it that's for them so if you want to know anything about Brighthelm or its uh, residents um, or any of the history like I mentioned earlier you can comment down below let me know and I will try to uh, answer it if I get enough uh, responses I might do a video about it I am planning on doing a blog Ooh, God. a blog on my website uh, down there um, links down below um, with some of the key factors or something um, key events um, that happened in Brighthelm or Rigdale um, before it became Brighthelm and kind of explain that a little bit but if y'all want any of that in more detail just let me know and I will try to explain it better or in more detail or something unless I am planning on keeping something a secret for the possible event of doing a spinoff or a prequel or whatever and then I will inform y'all that I am planning on touching on that and a separate story so yeah all my links are down below um as well as leo's uh youtube and twitter um they're down there um which is you know i think he did an amazing job with those yeah um yeah um check out the his links you know support him i think he's got some videos i don't know if, if he's done all the characters yet or if he's planning on doing all the characters, but I know he's got Brighton and Kalama, and I think also Cornelius. Um, he's got a progression video um, of him and kind of like the different stages from just the sketch to their completion um, on his channel. So you can go check those out, you know, support him. He's an amazing auth artist. Um, besides that, you know, my book is still available for a pre order. Uh, go check it out. The links down below I got pre-order giveaway where you can uh, win a signed copy of my book I'm like getting tongue-tied and stumbling over everything now but my giveaways down below you can click that um, all of my uh, 
whatever, yeah. It's available on Barnes & Noble right now. Amazon, there's a hiccup. It will be on there eventually. Don't know when. When I find out, I'll let y'all know, okay? Okay. Peace out. E-L-E. Everybody love everybody.